How is it going, everybody? This is Sean Barnes. I want to welcome you to The Way of the Wolf. So on the show today, I actually have someone that I've never met before. We came across, or I came across her profile just browsing through things on, on Facebook. I've been working on trying to expand my network quite a bit and hitting add, add, add. That can be a little bit reckless, so I caution you on, on doing that. But came across Alexis Andre's profile and saw a video that she posted, which really resonated with me. It, she was sharing a bit of her story. I felt compelled to reach out to her and ask if she would come on the show. So Alexis, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. So what part of the country are you in? Let's start there. I am in eastern Nevada in the middle of nowhere. Actually, I live out on a ranch, and our nearest town's about an hour away. Oh, I bet that's fun. Definitely. How long have you lived out there? I was born and raised out here. I moved away to California after I graduated, and I was gone for about 12 years, and I just came back in January of this year. Okay. All right. So one of the things that that I appreciate is that it seems like you've kind of delved into coaching and personal development and things like that. And from looking through your posts, it looks like you're you're doing quite a bit as far as reaching out and helping a lot of people. And you're just doing this actually on the side. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, I still have a full time job. So this is something I'm building on the side until it gets big enough where I can pursue it full time. All right. So what compelled you to actually start doing this? Oh, boy, that is quite the story. Um, in 2016, we went through some stuff with my daughter. She is nine now. And at the time, she had just turned four. And I got so stressed out and my body was just riddled with anxiety that it just started to shut down. And I had to go to numerous doctor's appointments. At one point, they thought that I had uh, multiple myeloma, which is a blood cancer, because my body was essentially attacking itself. And when they couldn't figure out what was going on, uh, they tried to prescribe me antidepressants because they told me it was all in my head, even though the test results showed that it wasn't. So from there, I started seeking natural holistic doctors and just really diving in to research things because I knew something wasn't right. And that is when I came across a lot of Tony Robbins material and just learning how much our mindset and our mental health really affects our physical health. So was there a specific book or did you go to one of Tony's events or what was it that really set the hook for you to kind of draw you in and, and pursue, I guess, listening or spending more time listening to him? I started looking at a lot of YouTube videos and really following along like what the root causes for anxiety, depression, stress, how to manage those because it got to a point where my stress was really affecting the way I was able to show up for my daughter in that season for her. And so from there, I started branching out and looking at other authors and materials in that space and it just was kind of a domino effect. I fell in love with it and I read hundreds of books. And in 2019, I attended my first Tony Robbins event. It was UPW in Dallas and it was absolutely life changing. And from there, I just began to heal and just began to master myself and learn and unlearn everything that I needed to, to come back to alignment with me. And it worked so well and was such a journey and so freeing for me that I decided to start helping other people do the same. Okay. So talk to me a little bit about unlearning. That's something that's very challenging for a lot of people. How, how did you deal with that? And were there any sort of, of habits or tendencies that you had that were uh, quite difficult or more difficult for you to unlearn? <laughs> Absolutely. A lot of our behaviors are actually subconscious programming that we learn in childhood and in our early adolescence. And the biggest things for me were 
those voices in my head that told me that I wasn't good enough, that I needed to perform in my job and do perfect, be perfect, or it wasn't up to par. And so for me, it was really doing the work of consciously, you know, looking in the mirror and saying, okay, well, what are my habits? What do I want to change? And when I would be faced with a situation where my anxiety would be triggered or I would be triggered to, you know, be reactive to some sort of situation or a person, I really forced myself to pause and to look at and say, okay, what is this trying to teach me? This is an old habit and I can make the choice in this moment to make a different choice because it starts with a trigger and then there's a reaction on our part. And that's where the rewiring begins is noticing the triggers and really being aware of those so that we can make a different choice. So it's interesting. One of the analogies I like to use when I have uh, people that I'm, I'm coaching or working with is when you feel yourself start to slip into that, that dark place, it's kind of, if you imagine almost analogous to, to kind of drowning, if, if your head is mm -hmm. just dipping below the water, it's going to be much easier for you to do change course, make some changes to how you're moving your arms or whatever to get your head back up above water to breathe. However, if you don't yep. change course until you're 10 feet down, it can be too late. And you just end up in this spiral that, that is extremely difficult to come out of. And sometimes other people, friends, family can't even pull you out if you end up going too far down. Has that been an experience of yours as well? Absolutely. There would be days where I would be triggered and, you know, somebody would really get to me. I used to really be triggered by other people's opinions and it would go for weeks at a time where I would just be down. It would just be, you know, I'd be sulky. I would allow myself to become a victim to it. And it wasn't until I defined my why and why I needed to change and gain leverage over myself that that was really able to change. So how did you find your why? Tell me about that. I mean, I guess I probably assume that the story that you just shared, uh, especially about your daughter, that was your why. Um, but was there anything else that made you realize, hey, this is the path that I want to go down? She is absolutely a big part of it. And I'm very close with my relationship with God. And mm -hmm. I just knew that I wasn't showing up the best that I could. So as hard as it was, I sat down and I forced myself to look at where am I at right now? What habits do I have? What actions am I choosing? And, you know, our habits and our actions define our lives. So if you take a picture and you look at your life the way it is right now, you can trace your steps backwards and see what habits have gotten you to this place. So I really sat down and I said, okay, I am allowing myself to become a victim to this and I am allowing other people and their words and these circumstances to harness my power. I need to take my power back. I need to let it go and just keep moving forward because there's not going to be a point in our lives where everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. So have you had any friends, family, or mentors that have kind of been that rock to help you through this process or has it been primarily intrinsically driven by yourself? I am definitely self-led. I have reached out when I have needed guidance and help and I have been seeing my therapist for two years and he is an absolute godsend. And, you know, if any of your listeners are, or, you know, are watching this and you haven't heard of therapy or coaching, I went through four different therapists before I found the one that I've got now, and he has been absolutely key in my growth and my healing, as well as the coaches that I've invested into. And, you know, at the beginning of this in 2016, I had lost my job because of the situation. I was struggling. I was going into debt, trying to keep myself afloat because the situation made it so that I couldn't pursue work full time. And so I grasped onto any free content that I could find. And, you know, the information is out there if we look for it. It's all over YouTube and Google, TikTok, Instagram, wherever it may be. And just filling and consuming my, 
the good things that would fill my mind with things that would project me forward. So a uh, few things there. I, I love the fact that you went out, you found the content because you're right. There is so much free content out there mm-hmm. that can truly help people. The, the trick is what do you do with it when you consume it? So another piece of that is, is forcing yourself to focus on the right content. It's very easy for us to start circling a drain and just look at negativity and negativity and, and instead of trying to surround ourselves with excellence and trying to surround ourselves with people that genuinely want to help. So another thing that, that we've spoke about briefly before we started recording was you, you have invested quite a bit financially in yourself, in your development, which I find extremely impressive. I've started doing the same myself because as as leaders and coaches, I feel that it's important for us to continually learn, never stop learning. Absolutely. So. Mm-hmm. Can you share a little bit about some of the, the courses, the content, the things that you've done, and, and even share how much you've spent if you're comfortable? Absolutely. I started with just reading different books. I've purchased hundreds of books. I still have to organize my bookshelf um, mm-hmm. back here. But So books, Audible, and investing in those. I have... Uh, When I went to UPW in 2019, I had just moved out and gotten out of a really toxic relationship. So fitness is a huge, huge piece of my life, but I sold one of my pieces of workout equipment so that I could afford a ticket. And I went to UPW and flying down there, it was a couple thousand dollars between the ticket and, you know, lodging and food and everything. And I have purchased, I think my last business coach was about $5,200. And my most recent is she's a little over $18,000 and she's my business mentor for the next year. But in the interim, I have taken um, Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi's uh, knowledge business blueprint course. That was a couple thousand dollars. And I've done a bunch of other certifications and, you know, it all adds up. But like you said, if, you know, investing in ourselves. And in order for me to continue to help people at the level that I want to, I have to keep growing. And it's the easiest way to just collapse time and to get there faster is to directly work with somebody who's done it before. Yeah, absolutely. So you you touched on briefly with fitness being a big part of your life. I've had quite a few other guests on the show. We talk about the importance of fitness and the underlying theme of the show is really becoming the best version of ourselves. And I am supremely confident that fitness plays a huge role in that. So can you share a little bit about your experience, your fitness journey and how that has helped you over the years? Absolutely. I mean, It's so hard in today's day and age because we have sedentary jobs. We're sitting all the time. When we come home, we're mentally exhausted. So we just sit on the couch. We're scrolling social media or we're watching TV. Our bodies were not designed to be that way. If you think back, you know, a hundred years ago, people were active, active out hunting and gathering and providing to survive. And our bodies scientifically are wired to move. And when we move, our body releases oxytocin, which is the happy hormone. And when we're constantly sluggish and sitting around, the cortisol levels are up. And my, I have a ton of different quotes that I live by. But one of the ones that Tony Robbins says is, get out of your head and into your body. That's why my daughter and I have um, dance parties all the time. Because if you can change your physiology then you can change your psychology and moving your body. It's a stress relief and it it's a complete game changer. It is. So, uh, you know, there, there are a number of people that I, that I coach as well. And I talk through them or talk to them about fitness and, and some people I actually offer some programming to just to help them get up and about and moving. But I find the most challenging aspect of it is to take that first step. And, and so mm-hmm. I encourage people, you know, just, just go for a walk around the block, just do something to start. 
and it starts to become a little bit of a, a snowball effect in my experience usually, but sometimes people need to build that habit as well. So with, with some of your clients, do, do you see something similar or do you all talk about fitness as well? Absolutely. And nutrition is a big part of it too. They definitely go hand in hand because if we're consuming a bunch of sugar, it's going to suppress our body's ability to thrive. And I teach the compound effect and I am an ex-accountant and everything is so relative. Compounding, like compound interest, if you know you invest in something, the earlier you do it, each day it grows little by little. The same is with fitness. If you start with a walk around the block, then the next day it's a little bit easier. And then maybe the day after that you go a little bit further and it's just a compound effect and then you gain momentum and then before you know it, you're at a place where you're feeling better. You want to move more. You're be, you're able to do more, and it's it's definitely a big part of it. Okay, so I've got to ask, how did you go from accounting to this? Most accountants that I know <laughs> don't fall into this realm. Uh, they're they're hyper focused on on numbers and data, not so much on mm-hmm. learning the types of things that that you learn. I think God has always wanted me on this path because ever since I can remember, I was always the one giving advice to my friends, always being there, you know, and really being, you know, the person that they could come to. And for me, I love accounting, but it's just not where my heart and soul are at. It's not fulfilling like it is working with people and helping them grow and heal. So this is definitely my calling. And it's funny how much science goes into it because our minds and our bodies are so scientific that if given half the chance, we can absolutely thrive in this life. So that's a good point. Now, I'm curious. So for me, early on in my life and my professional career, my passion was all around IT technology, things like that. And it wasn't until probably the past four or five years that I've started to to pivot a little bit more into the, the human side of things with, I, I lead a IT and HR team for my full-time job. And I think whenever I stepped into that role and started to realize it's such a huge dichotomy there between leading an IT group and an HR group, and IT has always come easy to me over the years. But what I've found is these recent years, the, the human element has become my passion. And being able to help people grow, help people work through their challenges and, and see that, that aha moment, that light that goes off whenever they realize whatever it is you're, you're working with them on, I find that to be very fulfilling, much more fulfilling than designing data centers, um, at least for me now. So for yeah. me, I have actually pivoted and switched, and it sounds like you've done the same. Absolutely. And this is why I teach so much on alignment, because I feel like when we are being our best, when we are showing up as our best and we're aligned with who we are and who God created us to be, and we shed all of the beliefs that society and our childhood has instilled in us, then we're able to step fully into our calling. And I know when I started accounting, I was so withdrawn and kind of numb to the world just because of experiences that I hadn't really forced myself to heal from. So I was still carrying that and it it tainted everything that I was able to impact and really have any sort of depth of connection with. So what is what is one of the biggest challenges that you face in transitioning to uh, to go, uh, so you don't do accounting for your full time job today? No, I okay. drive a 330 10 haul truck for a mine. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. So, yeah, pivoted there quite a bit too. So, what's, yep. what's one of the biggest challenges that you do face today and, and driving a three, 330 ton? Is that what you said? Oh, yeah. It's 24 and a half feet tall. They're pretty big trucks. <laughs> That is massive. Okay. All right. Sorry. Um, okay. So do you, do you struggle to find balance dr- uh, driving a truck that massive and then switching gears into coaching and, and helping people on the side kind of back and forth? And the reason I ask is for me, 
I definitely struggled switching my IT hat to my HR hat and back and forth and back and forth. So do you struggle with that? It's definitely a struggle. I One of the, the biggest reasons I chose this position is because I work swing shift. So I'll work like five days and then I'll have like four days off, work four nights and have five days off. So the bigger time gaps definitely help. But absolutely, when it is, you know, when I'm on my days on, I have a really hard time really having the energy to show up fully and completely. And so I'm really navigating you know, how to stay consistent in that without having these drop-offs. Well, I imagine you get quite a bit of time to catch up on audiobooks and process and think while you're driving. Is that fair? Absolutely. And that definitely helps. So my brain's, you know, always processing. So (laughs) yeah. So what's your favorite book and why? My favorite book right now, I would have to say, I've read it multiple times, is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And it just has so many principles in it that are relative to so many different parts of our lives. And every time I read it, it teaches me something different. And it's, you know, helped me grow in finances and building wealth and relationships in my relationship with myself, communication. So that's one I absolutely recommend. Yeah, actually, I've never I've never read it, but I will put it on on my list to to check out. So you also mentioned quotes to live by. What are what are some of the quotes that you enjoy most or I guess meaningful and impactful for you? One that when I feel myself get triggered and, you know, I feel those the water rising, so to speak, you know, um, where our focus goes, our energy flows. And this is where it gets into the scientific part of it again, because in our minds, if we're focusing on something negative, our reticular activating system is telling our minds to find more of that negative thing or more of something negative. And if we keep doing that to a point, our body gets addicted in a sense to the hit that it gets from that negativity. And so that is where, you know, if we're programming ourselves and we're priming our reticular activating system to look for something positive, then that's, you know, kind of shifts our focus. So where our focus goes, our energy flows. I like that. Um, I didn't realize it was called reticular activating system, but I'm going to do some research on it. So for me, <laughs> I'm, I'm also a car guy. And the the way that I relate to that is I feel like Anytime, and I used to buy a, buy and sell cars quite a bit, uh, not so much these days, but whenever I did, I felt like every time I would get a new car, I would see that car all over the place. Everywhere. And I think it was because yeah. I was starting to look for it. Yep. So, yeah, pretty pretty interesting stuff. So, how has, how has coaching been? How long have you been officially coaching people? I've been officially coaching people... Let's see. We're almost May. So going on about two years now. Okay. All right. And how does that, uh, how do you go about finding your, your clients that you work with? Is it through social media or word of mouth or what, what's worked well for you? Oh, I love this question. So <laughs> most of my, um, my connections are on social media, but one thing that I've learned is in order to find your ideal client, you have to be your ideal client. Okay. So, you know, walk in the walk and really embodying the changes that I've been through. And so that way you can bridge the gap for your ideal clients. So does that help them in, in relating to you? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like if you're, if you've ever talked to a friend and you're pouring your heart out and you're trying to just get their advice on it, but they've never really been through it. So they can't really relate. You don't really trust that guidance. So for you to really resonate and be impactful with somebody, it's, it's so much easier to have that and to see the transformation if you've walked in their shoes and come out on the other side already. So 
as far as some of the stories that you've that I've seen you share on on social media, is that kind of a a driver behind that? Because I, I I respect and appreciate the fact that you're kind of putting yourself out there, just being real and raw with with all of your followers, everybody that's on your friends list. Not a lot of people have the courage to do that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yes, I am very transparent and raw and vulnerable. And I talk about the hard things quite a bit because I know they're out there for so many people. I mean, I have hundreds of people in coming into my DMs, opening up about stuff. And our society has told us that it's taboo and we're not supposed to talk about that stuff. So that's a narrative that I'm working on changing. That's actually very, very impressive. It's funny. I was actually having a conversation earlier today. I was getting my hair cut and we were talking about this exact topic. Um, the uh, person there in, um, in the studio or salon or whatever you call it was uh, talking about creating content and asking questions about, well, you know, I don't want to be fake. I don't want to, you know, share myself with the world. And, and we were talking about balance. And maybe you don't mm -hmm. want to share the deepest, darkest secret to the world, but you have to share enough of yourself to be real and vulnerable for people to relate and, and associate with you. At least that's kind of what I've found. Now, full transparency, I haven't been able to be that real and vulnerable yet, uh, but it is something that I'm working on. That's good. I mean, you've got to start somewhere, you know, and it's a compound effect, just like we talked about with the other stuff. Yep, absolutely. Tying it all together. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so so what's what's next for you? You've had quite a journey so far. What what's next for the next few years? Oh goodness. Um, I have quite audacious dreams. So for the next couple years, I will be going full time in my coaching. That is my number one goal. And I'm actually working on writing a book, so I want to get that published. And thank goodness COVID is starting to lift parameters, so I'm going to start holding events again, which I have been just missing so much. So, yep. Okay. All right. So tell me about some of the events that you've held. That's pretty exciting. Yes. It's been a long year, but before I would hold events and... Um, I'm working on doing a couple day retreat and some like full day events, but basically individuals come and we work through, you know, the stuff that we've talked about, those limiting beliefs and shedding the stuff and the narrative that we have adopted and, and going through this program that I've built to find your alignment, define your alignment and your why. So that way when you leave, you have the tools to keep you going and you've gained the momentum to keep going and to create the life that you want. So how many people, do, do you set like a max number of attendees for your events? Um, I haven't set a max number of attendees. It's been pretty smaller spaces. So they're you generally like 20 to 30 people, but that's something definitely on my list is being able to find bigger event centers and being able to, you know, hold the space for more people and more transformation. That's pretty exciting. Very, very impressive. So when you, when's your next event? Have you set a date? I have not set a date. I reached out to one of my friends who does all the scheduling. So hopefully by the end of July, I'm going to say is we're going to, we're going to start having events. All right. You have any ideas on where? I am going to be starting some in my hometown of Ely, and I'm going to be branching out to Southern Utah. So Cedar City and St. George and possibly even Vegas. Okay. So, and do you have, at these events, do you have time set aside for like hiking or river rafting or things like that in, in whatever region you host the event? I have not looked at all of the details of it yet. I definitely want more of like the nature of the healing piece. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit that into my day events, but the weekend retreats absolutely will have some some sort of something like that. Uh, horseback riding, hiking, some something in nature for sure. Yeah, very nice. That's pretty yeah. exciting. So uh, how do how do people reach out to you? How do they find you? 
It is easiest to find me on social media. Um, you can type in my name, Alexis Andre. It's A N D R E. And my handle on Instagram is Miss Alexis Andre. All right. Fantastic. Well, Alexis, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been an absolute delight hearing your story. And, and my hope is that for my listeners, it will empower them and help them to realize that there is so much more. Even if you're in a deep, dark, challenging place, you can absolutely pull yourself out of it. You just have to put in the work put in the effort and start focusing on the things that you want to accomplish in life. So is there anything else you'd like to add to that? Um, absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Um, I would just say, yes, you know, if you feel like you're in the depth of the waters and the storm is just surrounding you, keep going, keep swimming. Even when you feel like giving up, just keep pushing forward. Yeah, Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you. All right, everybody, for those of you listening and watching, this will be on the YouTube channel. So please go out, like, and subscribe. Thank you all so much for listening, and y'all have a good one.